Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Conley. I work at HRC and I am part of the evaluation branch. I work on the policy section. If you call HRC and you don't know exactly who you're trying to reach, you're going to have a tough time. So make sure that you know exactly who you're trying to talk to. This is the executive brief. It is very short and to the point. However, modules 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are out on S1Net Mill Suite on the HRC website. They're more detailed brief. And they actually have the notes, the speaking notes. If you have any questions during the brief, just raise your hand and stop me right there and then because I don't want any of you to forget your questions if we wait till the end. Next slide. All right, so to give you some background, in 2010, <coughs> the Chief of Staff of the Army directed a review of the evaluation reporting system. As it pertains to the NCOER, there were three key areas Army leadership wanted to focus on. The first key area was to align the NCOER with current leadership doctrine, ADP 6-22. The current NCOER that we have in place has been in place for 28 years. That is a long time. Regulations have changed, ADPs have changed, so we need to ensure that we change the evaluation in order to um, meet the time frame. The second key area was to establish rating officials accountability. With the current NCOER, there is no accountability, right? The system is inflated. And it's very hard for DA centralized selection boards to actually select, select the very best NCO for promotions. The third key area was to determine if one NCOER fits every NCO in the Army, right? Based on responsibilities and or positions. We only have one report to assess Sergeants E5 all the way to Sergeants Majors and Command Sergeants Majors. So during the development process, the Sergeant Major of the Army, his Board of Directorates, and NCO Working Group review the process and made recommendations. Those recommendations were validated by a council of Colonel and General Officer Steering Committee in June 2012. Shortly thereafter, HRC was directed to review VA Centralized Selection Board's AAR comments to gather input from the field and lessons learned from fielding of the new OER. Final recommendations were made to the Sergeant Major of the Army in April 2014. Therefore, he moved those recommendations to the Chief of Staff of the Army and the Secretary of the Army, and they approved the following changes in August 2014. Next slide. We are going to transition from one NCOER to three NCOER based on grade plate. The direct level report for Sergeants E5, the organizational level report for Staff Sergeants through First Sergeants and Master Sergeants, and the strategic level report for command sergeants majors and sergeants major. One of the things that they wanted to focus on is rating officials accountability and that is going to be implemented by a rater tendency label. What that is going to do is track the rating history of how raters are assessing their population. The rater as of right now is not constrained. They can assess their population however they see fit. However, they must understand the Chief of Staff of the Army's intent, and that is to identify the best talent. The, another change is going to be that the senior rater profile is going to be implemented. That is the biggest culture shock to the NCO Corps. We all have been told all of our careers you are one one among the best, right? Because nobody wants to look at you in the face and say you're actually not a one one among the best, and because counselings are not being done. The senior rater is going to be constrained to 24% to that most qualified selection. That is a culture shock, right? Not everybody in here is going to be a most qualified, okay, based on that senior rater's population. Another change is the delineations of rating officials. Currently, both rater and senior rater are assessing performance and potential, which makes it very hard for the board to realize what it is that What's the message that rating officials are sending to DA centralized selection boards or to branch managers for future assignments? The rater is going to focus on performance and performance only. If the rater talks about the soldier's potential, that evaluation will be returned back to the senior rater for correction. The senior rater can talk about performance, however, the senior rater should only focus on potential for that NCO for the next three to five years out. The senior rater only has five lines of text on the new evaluation, all right? So while they can talk about performance, they should focus on the potential of that NCO. The assessment format, 
The Raider on the direct level report for Sergeants E5 and organizational level report, staff sergeants through first sergeants and master sergeant, is going to continue to assess in bullet format, just like we're doing now. The Raider on the strategic level report for sergeants majors and command sergeants major is going to assess using narrative format. The senior Raider on all three reports will assess in narrative format. So, get with your officer's counterpart. They've been doing this for a long time. So you can see how it is that they keep their narrative short, concise, and to the point. You only have five lines of text. The new support form is going to align with ADP 6-22. On the new support form, the senior rater is going to have a portion where they should counsel twice during the rating period. It's not a will, it's a should. However, I always tell people, it is your career, so make sure that if you're not getting that mentorship and guidance from your senior rater, that you get on their calendar so you can understand what is their senior rater's philosophy, what it is that they're looking for in order for you to hopefully attain that most qualified selection. The supplementary reviewer, on the NCOER right now, we have a Raider, Senior Raider, and a reviewer. That is not going to be the case come 1 January 2016. You are going to have a Raider, a Senior Raider, and a supplementary reviewer if required. A supplementary reviewer is going to be required when your Senior Raider is a Sergeant First Class through Master Sergeant and First Sergeant, a Second Lieutenant through First Lieutenant, and a W01 to CW2. And if there is no Army uniform personnel in the rating chain that meets the rate requirement of sergeants major, captains and above, and CW3 and above, or when the senior rater or someone outside of the rating chain directs a relief or cost evaluation. Are we clear on the supplementary reviewer? That's where we get most of our questions. Okay. I know the Sergeant Major said that one of the biggest questions or concern in your community is, can the First Sergeant be your Senior Raider? Yes, the First Sergeant can serve as a Senior Raider, right, as depending on what is the rank of the Rated NCO, okay? Because the Senior Raider is two ranks above that Rated NCO. So depending who is the Rated NCO, that's going to determine who will be the Senior Raider. So some rating schemes commanders are going to have to adjust in order for them to meet the guidance of regulatory re of regulations. <coughs> Next slide. Leader's role. You said adjust. Yes. How do you mean adjust? If for there is a senior rater grade requirement, right? The senior rater must be two ranks above the rated NCO. So if right now you have a staff sergeant as a rated NCO, and you have a SOM first class as their senior rater because there's another staff sergeant rating them or for whatever reason, you're going to have to change that because it doesn't meet the grade requirement. It has to be two grades above. So staff sergeant, their minimum grade requirement is two grades above to be their senior rater. So some rating schemes are going to have to be adjusted. Commanders are going to have to look at their rating schemes and See whose rating chain is going to have to be adjusted based on the regulation. There's always exceptions to the rules. However, that will require an exception of policy to go up to HRC, and it will require it to be approved. One more question. So the senior leaders that are in here are first classes. The senior rating for them. Who will be the senior rating? It depended on as long as they meet the two grade requirements. So. There's, you're going to have some where the company commander is going to have to be their senior rater. Or so you got, you got uh, E9. You got the first sergeant? Nope, the first sergeant does not meet the grade requirement to senior rate a sergeant first no, class. I'm saying two levels up. So mm -hmm. sergeant first class, back E8, then E9. Mm -hmm. That is the minimum grade requirement. But you also have to ensure that you follow the chain of supervision right. when you are selecting so rating schemes. So will be actually the commander. Yep. Some stuff 
course, we uh, saw those classes that are approved. So we would have to have one set up to HRC. They would be the approval authority. Yes. Would be the, uh, the so to every regulation in the Army, you can do an exception of policy, right? Whether that exception gets approved, it's up to the approving authority. The approving authority for any exception of policy that goes up to HRC, it is the commander of HRC. However, if you submit an exception of policy for one of your SOM first classes, the next question that's going to come down is, why can the commander be their senior rater? Okay, so yes, there could be an exception to every regulation in the Army. Whether it gets approved, it's up to the approving authority. Any other questions? Yes. Wouldn't that kind of be on the line of, so uh, user is a different animal than, than most places have. So uh, E7s in the center as the center leader, and AGR E7s that are the same MOS, but they serve a completely different duty. Mm -hmm. So that company commander can actually be their senior rater as well. But his senior rater profile, he can only give the most qualified to the top 24%. But you have a group of center leaders that do one job, and a group of sit E7 and start first classes that do it completely different. So that kind of, I think that's where it kind of comes well, in. Well, the beat that I think what he's trying to say is to make it easier, the start first classes are ATR, mm -hmm. and then you have an active duty of same ranking. So when he when the commander's profile will his profile be different because of the different component or the sergeant first class senior leader will this was that sergeant first class AGR in there for that rating for that above uh, uh, okay so these changes apply to all components right a sergeant first class whether reserve AGR AC is a sergeant first class right so if the commander the the senior rater profile is calculated by grade, not by component. So if the commander ends up being the senior rater for every SOM first class in their station, then guess what? You are competing with every SOM first class that he or she is senior rating. The senior rater's profile is calculated by reports rendered. So look at it as a bank account. The more money you put in the bank, the more money you can spend. It's the same way with the senior rater profile. The more reports you render, the more your profile is going to grow and the more most qualified you'll be able to give to those that are deserving. Does that answer your question? I got you, Sergeant. Yes. The officers think they have a free bullet for you to skip legal power. I forgot if you're actually allowing that in the NCO. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay, so the senior writers are going, once this NCOER rolls out 1 January, there is no credit applied. We're all starting at zero. However, there is a silver bullet exception. That is the exception to the rule. Where the senior writer can render one most qualified to one of his or her fourth report that they render. Right, but they have to do it within the first through the fourth report. If they do it on their fifth report, that is no longer an exception. Now they're using their actual profile. That is their option if they want off the bat to render a most qualified to somebody. They do not have to. It is an exception that they have where they can. <coughs> Does that answer your question, ma'am? Yes, thank you. Question? The 24 percent, sir, um, that is per grade, right? So. Whether the commander's rating SAR first classes or staff sergeants, she can do 24% of SAR first class, 24% of staff sergeants, correct? The senior rater profile is calculated by grade. Okay. Not by position. Not by position, by grade. Do not look at it as how many people does the senior rater senior rate. It's how many reports they have rendered. Their senior rater profile starts getting calculated the minute they submit their first report. Okay? So. Don't worry about people, worry about reports. What we have in the NCO core a lot is where we move people around and don't run their reports because hey, you pick them up, right? It's only 90 days, you pick them up. We're probably not gonna see that very often. Why? Because their senior rate is gonna wanna render those reports because it's gonna make sure that their profile keeps growing. So the more reports they render, the more most qualified they might have to give to that one NCO that is very disturbing of a most qualified. 
you guys have a question? Yes. So for all the staff sergeants that are throughout the command, we have staff sergeants in center leader positions, ACL positions, and, and detail recruiters. They're all in competition with each other within that company, right? Not necessarily, because it's based on who the senior raider is. Depends, right. It depends on who, who is the senior raider. We have to first, based on the new regulation, commanders are going to have to look at their rating scheme, right? and make sure that their rating schemes are in compliance with regulatory guidance. That's where they're going to assign raters, senior raters, and if supplementary reviewers are required at that time, the commander will identify who's going to be the supplementary reviewer. I got you. Just, just I got all of y'all. Let me answer his question. <laughs> if you have, let's say, Unless there's a you have a staff sergeant promotable, right? If you have Anyone that's promotable, staff sergeants and above, if they are promotable and serving in the next authorized position, so if you're a staff sergeant promotable and you are serving in an authorized on first class position, you will count towards that senior rater E7 population when they render that report. But you have to be promotable and serving in the authorized position. It can be either or, it has to be both. I got you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I'm just a little confused how this is supposed to accurately get among the best if all the sergeant first classes in the company are competing to be among the best. Um, it's not fair because some of the sergeant first classes are in charge of soldiers. Some of them are not. Some of the sergeant first classes do a completely different job than the others. So how is this really going to accurately determine who's among the best if all the sergeant first classes are raised the same or fall into the same category to rank? The right, the senior rater profile is determined by grade. So it's going to be that senior rater's job. Hopefully, your senior rater is counseling you and sharing their senior rater's philosophy so that you know what you need to do in order to hopefully attain that most qualified selection. It does not matter what job you're doing, right? That's not what I'm asking, though. That's not what I'm asking, sir. And I, I don't mean to disrespect you, but there's some sergeant first classes that are in charge of soldiers. Okay. And there's some that's not, but they're all getting rated the same. So who, who is, so who really is among the best? If that is up to the senior the rater class. to determine that. I think what he's saying is, okay, because we are used to it, you so, have 11 Bravos, 19 Kilos, 42 Alphas, you have all these different MOSs. So I think what he's saying is you have an 11 Bravo E7, uh, 42 Alpha E7, and a 70 Romeo E7. We're all E7s, but you have three different exactly. jobs. And only so a few are in leadership positions. So I guess that I, and I, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around this because as a Senate at Romeo, I'm competing with all the Senate at Romeos in this room. An 11 Bravo isn't competing with me, he's competing with all the 11 Bravos. But so I think that's competing. where the confusion is, is, is how to be established because they could all, all three of them could be the top 24% of their MOS. Does that make sense? I hear you, sorry. <laughs> she understands how you feel. But the evaluation is not based on MOS, right? It is going, yes, you're going to have to compete with your peers. You're going to have to do that. It's going to be a competition, right? It's a competition right now. However, the senior rater has to determine, hopefully they're counseling, who is the very best of the best? Who is going to be that most qualified? That is up to the senior rater to determine that. Because the senior rater's profile is calculated by grade, not by MOS. Well, and then in this, in, in recruiting, you have this uh, the software class center leader, and then you have that software class recruiter. Those are two totally different jobs. Uh, I hear you, Sarn. <laughs> so, I can hear you loud and clear. The way to think about that is, Everybody has the standard for their position. So if they're graded against the standard uh, that, that you have set or the regulations have set or whatever, whoever sets that expectation, it, it's kind of like a dog show, right? So the judge knows the ideal characteristics of that animal by three. And so if you think of it that way, I have this set of E7s that are not second eye Romeos or they're just over leaders or whatever. But it's this is the standard that I give them for their specific position, and then you grade them based upon that standard is a way to look at it. It might be able to help you out. Is it weighted by difficulty? 
Performance versus expectations is all it is. It's a little ratio. At, at the school, we had uh, several captains that were in different positions, but they all got weighted equally. It didn't matter what position they were in. Okay, based on the commandant on high, whatever expectations he wanted from them, he was able to, based on his profile, what he was going to do. It didn't matter what job he was doing. That, that did, that's, that's what's going on with us. Okay, the other, the other thing is, remember this. Sarkhani's just giving us info. She ain't the one that ain't changed nothing. Take a shot. I know, because this is going to create passion. Okay, because you guys are, you know, that's hard. That's a hard, you got to swallow the spill because the bottom line is the NCOER, whether we like it or not, the old one was just ridiculously, you can't compete. Now, just think about it like this. Throughout your career, up to this point, you've already surpassed individuals that have done, or, or people have surpassed you that have done less than you, and... However it was done, it's like, how did that happen? That's going to be hard to see now. Like, how did that happen? You know, um, so now you, your true ability and where you stand will be great. You will enforce that counseling from your waiter now that you didn't do before. Okay, so the best of the best will only survive. Now, that doesn't mean just because you don't get the top rating, you won't be promoted. So you got to get that out of your hand, too. Okay, everyone's just not going to be the, the best. The Army's still going to promote based on its needs also. Okay, so this is not going to just fall on the ground and, ah, oh, I will get my one one. Listen, everybody ain't a one one. Right now, everybody in here probably got a one one. And I could, you could break all y'all down right now. It all one ones. Okay, so the Army has to figure it out. How do we promote without um, looking at 15,000 one ones, and we cannot figure out how to promote 10 people. Okay? Yes, sir. So for the success that I that I'm gonna be essentially senior rating for the of the years, um, how does that uh, cost pulling things together, separate them from a population other than their views? What do you mean? How do you? Right? We're trying to look at pooling. Regarding what, sir? Pooling, like having a pool of how all right, so the officer population is very familiar with the term pooling, right? And that is when the senior rater pools a large population of people in order for them to take care of somebody in that population, right? Pooling is prohibited by the regulation, right? It's prohibited. However, you might have where Let's say at a unit level where you have an HAC commander, right? Where their staff falls under HAC, right? But technically that company commander is only supposed to senior rate four platoon sergeants, four E7. So let's say that that company commander says, I am going to pull every sound first class in my company, right? In order to make my population larger, in order for me to take care of somebody in that population so I can give them a most qualified. That is prohibited. That's why you're supposed to follow the chain of supervision when it comes to rating chain. So if right now you guys, let's say, have the first sergeant as your senior rater, right? First sergeant can no longer be the senior rater for some grades because they don't meet the grade requirement, right? The next person that's supposed to senior rate is who? The company commander, right? If you follow the chain of supervision, or let's say that the sergeant major says, you know what? I'm going to senior rate every song first class. That is pooling because that is not following the chain of supervision. Okay? So, yes, the commander, especially in this population, is going to have a larger pool because he or she is going to have to senior rate a whole lot of people based on the grade requirements. All right? But remember, the senior rater's profile is calculated by grade. Yes. Just to make sure I'm wrapping my head around this arm. So, if you're unfortunate enough to go to a small company and use for it, that's going to hinder you drastically, correct? What do you mean? So if my company commander only has 20 total soldiers, and he senior rates four of them, but 
I don't know, some, some feather ops company commander has 80 soldiers in his company, he's senior rating 15 of them, that I'm already at a disadvantage just by the nature of the company that I'm in, correct? Is that, is that? Because no, look at it, I told you that the senior raters profile, don't look at it people. Look at it as how many reports they He's have rendered. Do more reports. You don't know what that company commander's history is before he got to you, or he or she. So it's by reports rendered, right. not it's people. It's, it's throughout the entire. Yes, it's throughout the entire the career. To, you know, he or she was promoted to captain and they made a company commander. Three years later, when they're still a commander, they're still having. Rails. It's the senior rate of profile. It's. Continuous. It doesn't start. It restart. Your PCS is still is following you. You get out of the army and you come back in as a GS civilian. As long as you can senior rate people, guess what? That senior rate profile is there. So it's not, don't look at it as people. Look at it as reports. But yes, some of us are going to fall under a small population and or an immature profile. We're going to talk about that. Here in the next couple of slides. Yes. I think kind of earlier what was being hit on, and this is kind of what, one of the problems in Newstrike that I that I foresaw myself since last a year ago, was that when you look at this at the rating chain of responsibilities, which you like referenced like three or four times, there's there's actually times as an E7 center commander where I'm in charge of three, four E7s if I have a, a large center. And so that chain of responsibility isn't true in our environment because the reality is that E7 reports to me, he doesn't report to the first one. Okay. But by regulation, I can't parallel rate this guy because I can affect his career. You cannot so, senior rate. There so, is no so what you're saying is now with the new regulation, with the new regulation states, now I technically can rate this person? There is no greater requirement to be a rater or to be somebody's rater. Right? As long as you are their immediate supervisor, you can rate. The grade requirement is for senior rater. There is no grade requirement for a rater. As long as you meet the time and you are their immediate supervisor, you can be their rater. So if you're a staff. All right, if we're all talking at the same time, we all can't get the information. Yes. So then what you're saying is Sergeant Feather also center leader. He could have an E7 detailed recruiter beneath them, and by regulation in this form, he can rate. As long as he is that immediate class. supervisor, yes, he can. No. There is other details in the regulation, but as long as you are somebody's immediate supervisor, you can rate. There is no grade requirement for a rater. Woo. Rate requirement is for senior rater. You had a question? Yeah, you just answer. Yes. So there's no great no requirement for rate. So somebody has a big rank, as long as you're a media supervisor, rate. Uh, if that's two staff sergeants, if that's not a huge issue, if, if they're two sergeants first classes, then the senior rate would be the first sergeant because you can't see the rate because it's not too great. So you have to be a big company commander. The grade requirement is for the senior rater, okay? There is no grade requirement for rater. As long as you are their immediate supervisor, you are you can serve as their rater. Yes. I got a question. This might be a better question for the sergeant majors. But say you have a company that's prestigious, just the best company in use of rate. And you got a company over here that's substandard, right? And each of them have four center leaders in them, or four E7s whatever. And one of the guys from there is rated among the best of the people that they're getting rated against. While he couldn't hold a cup of water to the worst NCO in this company. Now, this guy gets rated four out of four, this guy gets rated one out of four. How are they going to look, be looked at whenever it comes time for promotion? As are they, is, is, is the, the true hero over here going to be able to be recognized? Or is that something that's going to be? So that is a, that's a leadership issue, okay? So that is the senior raider's responsibility to identify who is their most qualified, right? We could be 20-some first classes. One, two, 
three of us is doing more than the rest. We're not all doing the same thing. You could be a center commander, center leader. Somebody's doing more than the other. But it is the senior Raiders' responsibility to identify who is their most qualified. That's why I tell you, if you don't get counseled by your senior Raider and you don't understand their senior Raiders' philosophy, then you need to get on their schedule so you can understand what it is that they're looking for. No, like what if, what if I, these four have a senior Raider and these four have a senior Raider and these, these two entities don't even know each other. They're on a different side of the country, right? And so in this recruiter, in this senior Raider's mind, this guy is one of them. Hey, sir, let me explain. So I'm just you don't know, I, I, ran, I ran the boards for uh, officer, uh, for officers and warrant officers for selection, promotion, command, uh, centralized selection lists, and for uh, and for schools, right? So I, I did this for a couple of years, for two years, actually running general officers and colonels to come in, orchestrating the board and getting them to actually try to figure out who who's going to be picked for these particular positions, either for promotion or school or, 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 uh, or, or command. And so, uh, and I was able to see how the enlisted boards worked, obviously, being up there at HRC as well for the time frame. So that's always been a struggle from the standpoint of the officer realm of how do you delineate, how do you make sure that the A comps are going to the right people? Because you're right, every unit is different, every battalion is different, every you know, there's always a different feel, and one place is going to have more squared away officers than another, right? And it's just always going to be the case. No, nothing's ever equal across the board. What, what ends up coming out though in the in, in the long haul? is as you start moving from one position to another, it becomes telling how a person's performance truly is. If they're squared away in one, in one realm uh, and, they, and their, their paperwork reflects it, and then they take a big dip in the, ne in the next location, it, it'll show. It will show. Okay. And I will tell you that right now, over the course of time, and that's just it, is we're, look, we're looking at this right now as single isolated uh, evaluation reports. You're right, there might not be a measure of fairness that might come out of the wash, but as, as time progresses over a three, four, five year period of time, that will come out of the wash and it will reflect. Because the decisions that are made for the next individuals to be promoted to E8, to be promoted to E9, are going to come over the course of six, seven, eight, nine OERs from where you guys are at right now, right? Or NCOERs from where you guys are at right now. And, and from that, it's going to be based on your measure of performance over the course of a long period of time, not in the isolated position that you're in. So it will, it, it does, it does work. Okay. It does work. I, I just want to make sure that you kind of, kind of have a little bit more confidence. In no, that makes sense. I know exactly what, what you're saying. Right. And so it's always something you kind of struggle with, but that's the short-term fight. It's a long haul type of, type of posture. Cool. So. Any other questions? <laughs> okay, so the commander's role, leader's role, is to ensure, I'm telling you, if you have not read ADP 6-22, you need to pick it up and do so because that's how you are going to be evaluated and that's how you are going to evaluate your soldier. So you need to understand it before it's time to render an evaluation. Reinforce the Chief of Staff of the Army's intent. The purpose, the reason why we went with this is to identify the best talent. It is very difficult to select the very best when everybody's a one-one among the best, right? And when the results come out, everybody's like, how did this person get selected? Well, they got selected because their reports look just like yours. Okay, everybody's a one-one among the best. Rating schemes, again, it is the commander's responsibility to make sure that they establish rating schemes within the regulatory guidance <coughs> and follow the chain of supervisions. We have MTTs, TTTs out there training the force. We have been training since May 2015, and here we are. The system is live, EES is live. You can go into EES, create support forms, create NCOERs, sign them 14 days to the through date, and submit them 1 January 2016 on the new form. Anybody's through date that's 1 January and beyond will be on the new form, okay? If you are a SARM first class eligible for the Master SARM Board convening March time frame, 
you will get an HRC directed evaluation. Yes. So I have a question about the, uh, the rate of senior rate, and you said the NCOR does do pass on January. Okay, so if, if there's a, uh, a staff of uh, an E5, he can now wait an E7, then he recruits him, right? According to the regulation, there is no grade requirement. Right. So, <laughs> so, 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 my question is so, for these reports that we've already been doing, they're now due after one January, after one January. How do we how do we directly reconcile that because the first song we have to the greater because the, the old way under the old regulatory guidance I had to be a secret for E5 people waited to say how do we reconcile that now? So again, how rating schemes are established is whose responsibility? Commanders. Company commander, right? The commander. Not the S1, not nobody else, but the commander, because who signs the rating schemes and approves it? The company commander and approve at the next level all the way up to the three-star level, right? So if you have an E5, Sergeant E5, rating a song first class. Huh? It happens in USREC. It happens in USREC all the time. There is no great requirement. However, if you have reports that are due 1 January, right? Their through day is 1 January. No, no, that's the They will be on the new report. Right, I got that part. I'm saying, under the current system that we have, the civil leader, which is let's say 3506, you wouldn't have been the rate of prior to the previous year because it would have been the first one. How then do you reconcile those with the OER? Because they're not you. They're going to go on group four. You can do a change of rate and report. But there is no greater re greater requirement right now in the regulation. The direct supervisor doesn't have to be the rate of huh? correct? Does, does the direct supervisor have to be the rate? The rater should be the immediate supervisor of that soldier. Who sees their day-to-day -day operation of that soldier? That is the rater. The, the senior rater is the rater's rater. You have got to follow the chain of supervision and if for whatever reason you can't follow the chain of supervision that's when exception of policies get submitted to HRC. First one I have a question. For example, uh, they, put a, they put a message out saying that uh, if you want, if you've got an NCR yard due for a certain period of time, I don't know if it's just E7 or above, and you want to get it done now for the ending period of 31 December, for example, you want to rate those guys instead of waiting to February, can he go ahead and rate those guys? For or, or, or they have to be eligible for a board? The only personnel that are getting a code 19 HRC directed evaluation are Sergeant First Class eligible for the Master Sergeant Board convening March time frame. Reasoning why is because if you don't close every Sergeant First Class that's eligible for that board out, and put all of us on the same playing field, you can run the possibility of some people being on the new report where their senior rater elected to use their silver bullet on them and give them a most qualified off the bat. We don't want to run the risk of just because this Sound First Class got a most qualified that the panel will select them based off of that. That's why we're all getting closed out with a through day of 31 December. That is the only population that is going to get closed out. Everybody else is just going to follow their through date. That's what he's going to do. Sorry about it. Can you, can you clarify the dates again? <laughs> yes. So if you have not received, if you are SOM first class eligible for the Master SOM board convening in March time frame, if you have not received an evaluation, i.e. change of rater annual, extended annual, with a through day of 3 September to 15 December, you are it's not whether you want to or not. You do not have to meet the 90 days requirement. You will get a post-art report. Okay? 
the board will be briefed why we're doing this close start report. So you're going to have NCOs, we get this phone call all the time. They're not going to have very much on that evaluation. They just arrived to their new station, so they're going to have a lot of non-rated time. They're going to be briefed on why we're doing this report. If you did not have, if you didn't receive an, an evaluation with a through day of 3 September to 15 December, yes, you will get an evaluation, an HRC director report. Hmm? So you fall under that 3 September, 15 December time frame, yes. Another thing, because somebody brought it up earlier, there is no complete director evaluation. Okay? So there's not going to be complete the records seen by the board for the FY16 Master Song Board. Yes? I just have a question. Um, they've clarified the rater for the position. You said that uh, Sergeant can read a first class. What I said was that there's no grade requirement to be okay, a rater. That's why I'm clarifying because uh, it, the, the regulation states that that will be our sergeant or above and senior to the rated NCO, like rated or rated rank. Mm -hmm. So which one's right? Because based on the reg, it's stated that a sergeant can't rate a sergeant first class. There is no grade requirement, meaning if I'm a, what I'm saying with when no grade requirement, meaning if I'm a sergeant first class, my rater has to be an E9, an E8, a captain. That's where there is no grade requirement. But yes, there's still rules in the regulation that must be followed. That's why I said you're going to have a song first class, an E5 rating a song first class. What are the, the likelihood? But again, your population is unique. There are exceptions to the rules, can be submitted up to HRC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do have situations out here, like I said, where you have uh, one E6 is in charge of another E6 or E6 is over 47. I don't see how that person is going to rate the E7. I just don't see it. I mean, I know this commander can write the biggest community. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's also things that came out by the CG that said, hey, this is the way the rating schemes are going to go uh, based on his guidance. Okay. Like our senior rating schemes and all that. So again, USEREC is a very unique animal, right? And when the regulation is written, it's written for 90% of the Army, not 100% of the Army. We have exceptions to the rule. Exceptions can be submitted to HRC for to see if it gets approved or disapproved. Yes. Yeah, the, um, just a, just a, um, a center leader and a, a, a center leader in this organization, the command, is the subject matter expert, regardless of rank. They are in a supervisor position operating a center. We're going to have multiple NCOs flowing in and out of there, all ranks, but they are not the subject matter expert and they are not the supervisor. So a staff sergeant can operate a center and have 15 sergeant first classes in there and still complete the operation that, that was that mission for that center. So uh, you know, I know what we're talking about. Well, I just want to make it clear that the rank coming into this position, in other words, all the company commanders that have never been a recruiter before are coming in here trying to you're, you're being learn a position and leaning on their, their, their first sergeant as their subject matter expert. Even though they don't rate them, they're leaning on them. A new sergeant first class coming in recruiting, coming out of school, and there's a seasoned two-year staff sergeant running the center can supervise a sergeant for a class that don't know the job. It's not about them, you know, we psychologically might be, I just don't want nobody thinking that we can't do that. We can have staff sergeants and sergeants running centers with senior NCOs in there getting the job done. It's just being mature, being respectful, but the report card has nothing to do with anything. Nothing to do with anything. So um, uh, based on regulations, you're gonna follow them, but I'm just saying for that, when you make that comment, just to be clear, a staff sergeant, who's staff sergeant right now? How many of y'all got sergeant first classes in your center? Well, we used to. Okay, but you know, they're in there, you know, 
operate uh, you operate to the standard. Okay. Yes, there is an exception. The right ETPs up to HRC for approval or disapproval. Yes. That's one of the back to that Uh huh. Or uh, I have an NCO that's submitted a retirement package, but he would would have been eligible for the board. Is he also having to have a COVID nineteen for him? Is he declining? Right. So he's not okay. going to so be seen by the board. If he declines, if he has a retirement code, he won't be seen by the board. We submitted the packet hasn't been approved yet. <clears throat> he has to go in and decline. Once the board message comes out and he gets notification, he needs to decline to be seen by the board. Yes. So previously, sir, and, and maybe I heard you wrong earlier, I just want to clarify. As we sit with the rating schemes right now, with current NCOERs that are not due before the end of the calendar year, so through dates after 1 January, once 1 January hits, the old NCOER formula, the old counseling forms, all that, just trash, correct? And everybody falls. So if your through date is 3 January, you're getting a new NCOER. All right. That's why the system has been live since 10 November with the new support form. Regulations in DA PAM have been out since 10 November to give the field time to understand what the new regulation is saying and to transfer information to the new support form. But if you have an NCO that their through day is 1 January, they will be on the new report. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> next slide. All right, next slide. So the rater tendency label, right? The rater is not constrained again. The rater can assess his or her population however they see fit. <coughs> however, what they're going to have is their rater tendency, where their rater and senior rater can have access to their tendency in EES. So your rater and senior rater are going to be able to log into EES and see how you are assessing your population, okay? That label that you see in blue will be applied to the completed evaluation once it's processed at HRC. That is the history for that rater. That's just an example, right? So according to this example, this rater has rendered 12 reports in that grade. And that's how he or she assessed their population, right? Not everybody is a far exceeded standard. Not everybody is the cream of the crop, okay? And we're gonna have to accept that. What we are projecting is that most NCOs will fall under the MET standard category, okay? That's what we are projecting. Up top on the evaluation it says, I currently rate number of NCOs. That's where that rater will put the number of how many they are currently rating right now, okay? Um, again, the rater will put comments in there. That is the rater's overall performance assessment. Now, if your rater checks on any of the attributes and competencies they did not meet standard box check, the far exceeded standard and exceeded standard box check will automatically be grayed out in the system. Their overall performance on you will not be a far exceeded or exceeded standard. You're going home with that. If you get a did not meet standard on any of the attributes and competencies. Go home. Okay. On the couch. And again, the rater is using bullet comments for sergeants E5 all the way up to uh, master sergeants and first sergeants. And they will address the narrative comments for sergeants majors and command sergeants majors. Your actual, the actual rated NCO is going to be able to see how you are assessing the population once they go into, um, once they go into their I-terms and pull their report. So they're going to be able to see what you're doing. Okay. While this is a tendency right now, if two years, three years from now, Army leadership says, HRC, I want data because I want to see if we're going back to the old ways of inflation in the system, it's already built in the system where this will become a profile like the officers did in April, okay? So if off the bat, let's do the right thing and assess properly because if not, the Army's going to tell you how you're going to assess, okay? You're going to be constrained as a Raider as well. The Raider tendency can be restarted. 
If you start off and you don't take it serious and you be like, you know what, everybody's a far exceeded standard. Why not? I can do it. You can request a restart, but you're going to have to have render six reports in the particular grade that you are trying to restart. And you are going to need a memorandum signed by your first general officer. <laughs> and that doesn't mean that the restart is approved. It still has to go up to HRC for approval. Okay? So just make sure that you are doing the right thing as soon as this evaluation goes into effect. All right. Any questions? Next slide. The senior rater profile label. This label is going, what you see here in blue, that label is going to be applied to the completed evaluation once it's processed at HRC. Whatever box check the senior rater check, it's what's going to be up there. As you can see right here, it was a highly qualified. If the senior rater checks highly qualified, qualified, and not qualified, that will be the label that will be applied to the evaluation. If the senior rater checks a most qualified, and their profile does not support a most qualified selection, your evaluation will automatically be downgraded to a highly qualified, and that's what's gonna be labeled, okay? So unless your senior rater tells you, hey, I mismanaged my profile, I came out of EES and I submitted an evaluation hard copy, and I checked a most qualified, but my senior rater profile did not support a most qualified selection, your evaluation was automatically downgraded. If they don't tell you, you won't know until you check your records. Because we won't tell you. Okay? They will get the notification that they got that they had a misfire. But you won't. So <laughs> right. So what's gonna be on the label, of course, whatever box check that senior rater check is gonna have the rated NCO's name the senior rater's name, the date the report was received at HRC, the total number of ratings for this particular NCO, how many times has this senior rater senior rated this particular person, and how many times this senior rater has senior rated this particular grade. So that's gonna be important because we have what is called a small population, which is three personnel or less, and an immature profile, which is five reports or less, right? So up top it says, I currently senior rate three Army NCOs in this grade. By regulation, that is considered a small population, okay? And then at the bottom it says, total ratings. This senior rater has rendered three reports in that grade. So this NCO right here, this example, this NCO falls under a small population and or an immature profile. If you fall into one of those things, which a lot of us are, the key message that's going to be to the DA Centralized Selection Board panel is do not pay attention to the box check. That senior rater would not have most qualifies to give to NCOs. Pay attention to the narrative portion of the evaluation. Okay? So in saying that, do not just concentrate on the box check. Pay attention to what your rating officials are putting on this evaluation, okay? Because you can get a most qualified box check all day, but if that narrative does not support a most qualified box check, guess what? When that evaluation gets viewed by the board, they can say, you know what? This senior rater just didn't have it in them to tell this person, you're not that most qualified. So they just checked the box, but give, gave them a poor written narrative, okay? So pay attention to the narrative of the evaluation. Quick question for you. You said that uh, some of the, the where it says highly qualified, most qualified, that those can automatically be downgraded. Is there instances where if the bullet is weak, but they didn't mark most qualified, is there an instance where it would be upgraded automatically? Okay. So I want to be clear, because I don't want you guys to go out and say, Sergeant Conley said, the only selection, the only box check that can be downgraded and the only way it's going to be downgraded is if the senior rater's profile does not support a most qualified box check, right? For NCOs and EES, the only way your senior rater can misfire, because that's what it's called, is if they come out of EES and do a PDF fillable form, 
okay? If you stay in EES and your profile does not support a most qualified box check, it will give you a warning in orange. However, that most qualified box check will automatically be grayed out. It won't even let you check it, okay? So it's safe for you to stay in EES. If you come out of EES for whatever reason, because it's down, you don't want to use it, you don't like it, and you do a PDF fillable form and you're not tracking your profile, you run the risk of when that evaluation is submitted where they most qualify, once we bounce it off your profile, because that's what we do, we get the report hard copy and we load it into EES. If it doesn't support a most qualified, automatically it's gonna get downgraded. That is the only box check that can get downgraded. Okay, so if they check highly qualified, qualified, and not qualified, that's what the report is going to be labeled. Okay? Yes. Sorry, who, who determines if it's if it is measurable to the most qualified? Like who's the is that HRC? Is that a no, that is a senior rater. Whatever box check if Right, but you're saying if, if a senior rater puts it's in about the default. Yeah, this person's mostly qualified system. and then gets the HRC and the system automatically downgrades it to so highly qualified. Who's the person making that decision? Okay, so in EES, the system calculates the senior rater profile. They automatically calculate it. They submit reports, oh, their senior rater profile is calculated. Now, for whatever reason, we get a hard copy evaluation. We have this machine, it's called a Colfax machine, where we upload the evaluation into EES, right? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this hard copy evaluation and we're gonna go into the system, <coughs> put your DOD ID number, and see. Does your profile support this most qualified you try to check, that you check on this form? Right. I, I was no, it's not based on what the narrative says, no, no, That's where it's the system. Okay. That's why stay in the system, it's user friendly. So basically I think I'm going to check it to make sure that someone's going to try that. Yes. Uh, required comments, currently they, the kind of required comments is promotion, the next event, school, and are we required to put all that in the narrative? Nope. That is up to the senior rater how they want to assess that potential. But 99.9% .9 of the evaluation we review are school, uh, promotions, school, assignments, and something else. So yeah. is the potential for that NCO or officer for the next three to five years in the Army. You're only going to have three, um, five lines of text. Now, there are, there are some prohibited comments that can't be talked about on the evaluation, right? I.e., six plus NCO, that is bore language, right? That is the type of language that the DA Centralized Selection Board uses when they're ranking personnel. So you cannot say that on the evaluation. If you do, and that evaluation is for a bore, that statement will automatically be omitted and it will say, Prohibited comments removed by headquarters DA. Let me, let me, let me clarify what that six plus six five, right? So, so in, in a board, uh, there are two screens that pop up, right? One screen permanently is going to have your, your ERB and your picture that's going to be up there. The other one is going to start with your latest NCOER and it's going to backtrack for, for, for a, a board member to be able to access the files one NCOER at a time. If your latest first, that's it's the oldest, right? And, and as a board member evaluates each particular file, they give a score for that person relative to what they've already done as a sort of a practice target type of board up front. And then as time progresses, they kind of establish almost robotically in the back of their heads what they, what they evaluate as sort of the average person, what's going to be to the right of average, what's going to be to the left of average. They, they are given a scoring mechanism of one through six, right? Six being the absolute best, this is the best NCO, best officer since sliced bread. Two, truth be told, is the bottom end spectrum, and if you give somebody a one, it's called a show cause, or, or a, 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 a suggestion to HRC that the person needs to be involuntarily separated. So you don't even include one, right? Unless there's derogatory data in your file. You know, the Gomar or something else, or a DUI that's not up with you with the 15 6 investigation and UCMJ action in there. So it, those are those are no brands right there. So for the most part, you're really looking at a 2 through 6 file in here. 6 being the top end, 
And then, at the discretion of the board member, they also have sort of to be able to finesse this, a little plus and a little minus. <coughs> so that gives them a little bit more emphasis on something. So you can have a six, and then because this person has really stood out, you know, that person's been an aide de camp to the POTUS, you know, you can actually give that individual a plus, right? So, and, or you can give them a little bit of a minus on there too. And so at the very end then, you have 10 board members, the best possible score you can yield is a 60 plus six, right? That sort of comes out of the wash now because you have an order of merit list. The next person might be a 60 plus five, 60 plus two, you know, and then and then and then so those pluses actually do count towards that as well. So when you put in a, a comment like a six plus, that, that is signifying, hey, this is what you need to vote the person, right? That's exactly and that's the message to the board that, that's kind of being transmitted by the six plus aspect. Yes. And you also cannot reference box checks in the narrative. So you can't say if I had the most qualified I will give this person the most qualified. <laughs> I can't say that. It's going to get removed, it's going to get omitted, it's going to be replaced with removed by headquarters DA. What the board member doesn't know is what was removed by headquarters DA. Okay, so you leave people out to interpret what was removed. You can't say top 24%, but you don't have that rating. You, you can use enumeration. Yes, you can. Numeration, exclusive narrative, strong narrative, yes, you can. You can say top 24% of some first classes I have rated in 20 years of my career. Yes, you can enumerate. Even if you don't have that block left. Get, them. Get out of your head, people. The 24% for the most qualifies by reports rendered. That's the way you got to look at the senior raters profile. Okay? They just got to keep their profile 24%. If they go over 24%, it's going to break their profile, okay? Any questions? Nope. Next slide. All right, so this is our timeline, and we are on track for 1 January 2016. The system is live. Go in the system and create reports or support forms. The actual rated NCO initiates their support form, okay? Have people go in the system and create their support form. If you are rating officials, make sure that you give your NCOs your support form so that they have the correct information to input in the system. Okay? The ODID number is the primary number used in EES. If you do not input the correct ODID number, it's not going to send notification out to the person that needs the notification. They're never going to be able to see that evaluation. Okay. The rated NCO can go into EES and input administrative data to the NCO yard. Once you come out of there, that evaluation is locked to you. You can no longer see it anymore. The next time you'll be able to see it into EES is when it's time for you to sign the evaluation. Okay? It's designed for rating officials to do their portion and not the rated NCO. Again, the regulation, the DA PAM, it's out there. Pull it up and see the changes, okay? Next slide. All right, this is our training concept. We have been training Army-wide, nonstop since May of this year. All the way to Afghanistan and back, okay? So hopefully everybody has received the training and this is not news to them come 1 January 2016, but we're expecting it. Next. All right, pending your questions. So the common sense would say that this EA board comment was going to be the last time that the motion was to see the board in this year. Not per se. So the first board to see an actual 2166-9 series report is going to be the SOM First Class Board convening next year. That does not mean that because of 2166-A, we're no longer using that report, that board members can pull that report to see in the system. They can go back as, yes, yeah, they can go back as far as they need to to, um, to assess you. So yes. Yes, ma'am. 
So there are only two required comments in the HBR. The one is the EEO chart comment, and the other one is the reader in their comment I rate this number of NCOs of this rent, right? That irate number of NCOs is not a comment. It's actual a block on the NCOER where they have to input a number. But yes, sharp is mandatory common. If they're, the sharp common is going to go into the character's block, right? How this NCO, either he or she, how they adhere to the sharp program, the Army sharp program. If there is no sharp common in there, that evaluation is going to be returned to the senior rater. One key thing. <coughs> The owner of the evaluation is the senior rater, not the soldier, okay? The person that owns that evaluation is the senior rater until that evaluation is processed into the soldier's records. Once it's processed into my records, now it's mine. Until then, it belongs to the senior rater. If anything needs to be corrected on the evaluation, if it's returned for whatever reason, the person we're going to talk to is the senior rater. So if you call HRC wondering about your evaluation, we're not going to talk to you. Okay? The senior rater owns the evaluation, not you. Yep. Go home. All right. If there's no more questions, that concludes my briefing.